Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So it's no secret that I have an affinity to the immaculate White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany. Whether she's battling angry regressive leftists on CNN or blasting fake news journalists from the White House podium, it's like she was created in a lab and specifically designed to enrage progressives. But it's more than just quick wit and theatricality that make Kaylee so thoroughly intimidating. Kaylee seems to have mastered the knack of knowing whether a question is actually a question and of course therefore worthy of an answer, or whether a question is actually an accusation and therefore worthy of derision. And the absolute king of the old accusation as a question technique is CNN's own Acosta-in-Chief Jim Acosta. Jim Acosta has made a name for himself as one of the most nauseating anti-Trump journals in the global media. He doesn't really behave like a journalist, he's more of a commentator masquerading as a reporter, which is why his line of questioning always seems to be so spiteful. Like, other reporters will ask serious questions like, how's the economy projected to look, what's the president's plan for veterans, etc, etc, while Jim just sits there like, Why is it, Mr. President, that you always seem to side with the accused and not the accuser. You seem to time and again side with the accused and not the accuser. Is that because of the many, many allegations that you've had uh, made against you over the years? Ugh, this goes on for 12 more minutes. And let's not forget this from moments before. Thank you very much. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, after I'm finished, if uh, Ouija or Hallie or, or Vivian or one of our female colleagues could go after me, that would be great. Um, Mr. President, just to follow up on these allegations against uh, Brett what, is, what does he mean by that? Explain. What, what, is, what does uh, that it would mean? Be, I think it would be great if a, if a female What does it mean? Reporter, no, what does it mean? It would be great if a female reporter would ask you a question about the, this issue. A question that's really an accusation is designed to make the questioner feel good about themselves rather than to get a substantive answer. And Jim Acosta does it all the time with Kaylee McEnany. But watching him try to conquer Kaylee's defenses is like watching a dog trying to walk on its hind legs. And to be clear, Jim is the dog. It's like seeing a dog walk on its hind legs. So what I want to do today is take a particularly famous encounter between Kaylee McEnany and Jim Acosta and dissect it to find everything wrong with Jim's behavior and all the wonderful ways that Kaylee manages to slay him. See, we can all learn from Kaylee. She is a brilliant debater, and whatever anyone thinks of Donald Trump, she is across her brief. The clip is from a press conference on June 19th, in which Jim levels questions at Kaylee about masks, rallies, and most prolifically, the notorious satirical CNN racist baby video. For some context, on June 18th, Donald Trump tweeted a short clip from his favorite meme maker, Carpet Donkdom. The video was a parody of CNN using a famous clip that they reported on last year of a black baby and a white baby running towards each other and hugging. Kapadonktum turned it into this. As you can see, it is a rather clever parody of the way that CNN manipulates stories and headlines to create fake news about Donald Trump. And make no mistake, it is very, very obviously a parody. I mean, the strap at the bottom of the screen spells toddler with one D for goodness sake, and then states that the racist baby is probably a Trump voter. Very, very obviously a parody. 
However, in true mainstream media style, journalists decided to take it as if Trump was spreading lies about CNN's reporting. Within what seems like minutes, the headlines started coming out saying Trump was tweeting false information, then it was deceptive, blah, 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 and then it was trending all over Twitter pushed with comments like, the president is tweeting out a fake edited CNN video. Twitter even slapped a manipulated media label on it just to be spiteful. But then again, Twitter has really been leading into the orange man bad agenda since Trump signed that executive order against social media censorship, so it's really not surprising they did that. Soon afterwards, Carpa Donctum's Twitter account was suspended because of a malicious copyright claim about the video, which is dumb because the company who made the claim were perfectly happy to let CNN report on it for ages, and the video was removed from Twitter. Oof. So, now you have the context, let's watch the clip. Um, there will be several White House officials at yeah, the rally tomorrow. Will those officials, or will you be there, uh, for example? I will be there. Uh, will you and other White House officials be wearing masks at the rally? It's a personal choice. I won't be wearing a mask. Um, I can't speak for my colleagues. And why won't you wear a mask? Is it sort of a personal political statement? Is it because the president would be disappointed in you if you don't wear a mask? It's a, personal, it? it's a personal decision. I'm tested regularly. I feel that it's safe for me not to be wearing a mask, and I'm in compliance with CDC guidelines, which are recommended but not required. And if I can ask you about uh, last night, the president uh, tweeted out some fake videos, uh, one of which was labeled uh, manipulated media uh, by Twitter. Uh, why is the president sharing fake videos on Twitter about two toddlers uh, who are obviously showing a lot of love for one another? It, it seems as though he's exploiting children to make some sort of crass political point. Uh, no. Why is he sharing fake videos? Okay, Jim would absolutely have known by that point in time that the video was a parody. It was all over Twitter, conservative commentators were talking about it, it was very, very obvious that that was the case. But he didn't care because he wants to paint the narrative for the gullible and the stupid that Trump was deliberately tweeting misinformation. Jim is so keen to damage Trump in any way that he can that he will happily lie during his line of questioning because he knows plenty of people listening hate Trump so much that they won't actually look for the truth. To continue... He was making a point uh, about CNN specifically. He was making a point uh, that CNN has regularly taken him out of context, um, that in 2019, CNN misleadingly aired a clip from one viewpoint repeatedly to falsely accuse the Covington boys of being students in MAGA gear harassing a Native American elder. Um, that's a harassing video, a misleading video about children that had really grave consequences for their future. Okay, so Jim's questions are, again, accusations. The first, which is, will White House House officials be wearing masks at the rally actually means White House officials haven't been wearing masks. The second, which is will the president be disappointed in you if you wear a mask, is not only an accusation but a personal insult. Is it because the president would be disappointed in you if you don't wear a mask? Jim is accusing Kaylee of subservience to Trump, as if she's desperate for his approval. Now, this is an age-old accusation leveled at conservative women. That is, we only believe what we believe because we want the approval of powerful conservative men. It is incredibly sexist, considering that it is in direct opposition to the feminist notion that women should not be defined by the men that they associate with, nor should it be assumed that all of their opinions stem from those men. But all of that feminist principle goes flying out the window when it comes to women on the right. Now, there's also a vague hint of slut-shaming in there. I mean, the notion that Kaylee and other right-wing women want approval from men can mean a number of different things, and is often quite explicitly put when feminists like Clementine Ford and Mona Elta Hawe use phrases like boy suck and bootlicker of the patriarchy. How astounding that Jim Acosta, defender of the meek and ally to women, was able to encompass all of that in one little comment. He and other left-wing journalists would be ropeable if the same question were asked of a prominent Democrat woman by Trump or someone similar. But as the saying goes, if the regressive left didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. Carry on. So, to, so you're saying it's okay to exploit two toddlers hugging one another on a sidewalk to make some sort of political point. Uh, you, I mean, as you know, the president has described uh, members of the press as fake news uh, during the course of this administration. When you share fake videos like that, doesn't that make you fake news? 
I think the president was making a satirical point that was quite funny. If you go and actually watch the video, um, I think he was making a he was making a satir. The the point is, uh, it was a play on CNN repeatedly taking the president out of context. Like the time when you guys had a, a Chiron that read Trump slammed some illegal immigrants. They're animals. Well, guess what? The people he called animals were MS-13 illegal immigrants who regularly mutilate people in this well, country. Those things are entirely misleading. You don't mind pointing out the president Not has referred to some Mexican immigrants as rapists. He has tried to pass a Muslim ban in this country. He has described a, a black NFL that's, players as sons of bitches if they take a knee that's during an a football absurd game. Offense, uh, uh, that's an absurd uh, attempt to justify the misleading headlines that are regularly on your network. Like I was just walking in watching CNN as they are, lauded are the, the, the quote the rallies in the streets. Are you, you, were, are you saying that the president got to let me finish, Jim? This, this isn't a cable news segment. I'm answering your question right okay. now from the White House podium. <laughs> Here, Jim includes another question that is not a question. So you think it's okay to exploit toddlers to make a political point? That is not a serious question because there is no substantive answer in the public interest to be drawn from it. It is again an accusation. And aside from anything else, Trump was not doing that. He was making fun of CNN. The only people exploiting toddlers to make a political point here are CNN journos who are remaining deliberately obtuse about the fact that the video Trump tweeted was satirical. Kaylee also rightfully points out Jim's hypocrisy given the way that CNN reported on the Covington kids. And it should also be pointed out that CNN's reporting on Greta Thunberg and the children playing truant for climate change was not only exploiting, but terrifying children to make a crass political point. Again with the double standards. It continues. When I walk out of here, when I when I walk out here, Jim, when I walk out here, Jim, and I see on your when I see on your network celebratory headlines about the rallies and the protests outside, and you actually said protests and rallies. So, in light of a protest, if these gatherings happen in light of a protest or a rally, as you say, that rally is to be condoned, but not the president's rally. We can all learn from the way that Kaylee handles Jim here. I mean, Jim asks the same dumb question, trying to crack her, but Kaylee is just too prepared for him. She knew that at least one journalist, probably Jim, would ask her about the video. So she comes with reams and reams of examples as to why the video was making an accurate satirical point. She delivers all of this with grace and calm and then adds the sting at the end to point out just how many times Jim Acosta has inappropriately interrupted her. You've got to let me finish, Jim. This isn't a cable news segment. I'm answering your question right okay. now from the White House podium. Again, something that feminists would be shrieking about if it was a Fox News journalist repeatedly manterrupting a Democrat press secretary. But again, since Kaylee has the uh, wrong politics, they just don't care. Anyway, now to the grand finale. I mean, it's appalling. You have one person on your network saying that this is a celebration in the streets, a carnival-like atmosphere. There's a guy with a sign that says free hugs. Um, it's beautiful yeah, what's happening in the streets. The there is music. People are hugging. You celebrate hugging in the context of a protest, but in a Trump rally where we celebrate historic low African-American unemployment, criminal justice reform, HBCUs, that rally is not allowed because guess what, Jim? It doesn't fit the ideological agenda of CNN. Peter Alexander. Brilliant work from Kaylee. What Jim is doing there is employing an old regressive leftist tactic of shifting the goalpost when it looks like he's losing. Kaylee simply doesn't let him. She keeps going even when he tries to derail her repeatedly by interrupting her and she keeps drawing it back to her original point. That is, why the parody video made an accurate point about CNN. And as the cherry on top of one fabulous cake, she even manages to slip some Trumpian campaign talking points in as a tag. It's just a verbal work of art. I don't know how she does it, but honestly, if you are looking for a way to improve your debating skills when it comes to the regressive leftists in your lives, just watch Kayleigh McEnany's press conferences. Each one is a masterclass. Certainly, I learn an awful lot from her. Which is, I guess, why I keep making videos about her. But nobody's complaining, so I'll probably keep on making them. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.